A reading from the first book of Samuel. The Philistines gathered for an attack on Israel. Israel went out to engage them in battle and camped at Ebenezer, while the Philistines camped at Aphek. The Philistines then drew up in battle formation against Israel. After a fierce struggle, Israel was defeated by the Philistines, who slew about 4,000 men on the battlefield. When the troops retired to the camp, the elders of Israel said, Why has the Lord permitted us to be defeated today by the Philistines? Let us fetch the ark of the Lord from Shiloh, that it may go into battle among us and save us from the grasp of our enemies. So the people sent to Shiloh and brought from there the ark of the Lord of hosts, who is enthroned upon the cherubim. The two sons of Eli, Hophni and Phinehas, were with the ark of God. When the ark of the Lord arrived in the camp, all Israel shouted so loudly that the earth resounded. The Philistines, hearing the noise of shouting, asked, what can this loud shouting in the camp of the Hebrews mean? On learning that the ark of the Lord had come into the camp, the Philistines were frightened. They said, gods have come to their camp. They also said, woe to us. This has never happened before, woe to us. Who can deliver us from the power of these mighty gods? These are the gods that struck the Egyptians with various plagues and with pestilence. Take courage and be manly, Philistines, otherwise you will become slaves to the Hebrews as they were your slaves. So fight manfully. The Philistines fought, and Israel was defeated. Every man fled to his own tent. It was a disastrous defeat in which Israel lost 30,000 foot soldiers. The Ark of God was captured, and Eli's two sons, Hophni and Phinehas, were among the dead. The word of the Lord. Redeem us, Lord, because of your mercy. Yet now you have cast us off and put us in disgrace, and you will not go forth with our armies. You have let us be driven back by our foes. Those who hated us plundered us at will. Redeem us, Lord. You made us the reproach of our neighbors, the mockery and the scorn of those around us. You made us a byword among the nations, a laughingstock among the peoples. Why do you hide your face, forgetting our woe and our oppression? For our souls are bowed down to the dust, our bodies are pressed to the earth. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. A leper came to Jesus and kneeling down begged him and said, if you wish, you can make me clean. Move with pity, he stretched out his hand, touched the leper and said to him, I do will it, be made clean. The leprosy left him immediately, and he was made clean. Then warning him sternly, he dismissed him at once. Then he said to him, see that you tell no one anything, but go and show yourself to the priest and offer for your cleansing what Moses prescribed. That will be proof for them. The man went away and began to publicize the whole matter. He spread the report abroad so that it was impossible for Jesus to enter a town openly. 
He remained outside in deserted places, and people kept coming to him from everywhere. The Gospel of the Lord. The great period of the judges in the Bible of the Old Testament comes really to a crashing halt in our first reading today. The sun is now setting on that rather chaotic age, 200 years of all sorts of battles and trying to hold on to what they had there in the promised land, and and none of it succeeded. And today they did the worst thing of all. Their relationship with God was so external. They all believed that there was a God, but did they really believe it? And when our faith is superficial, we can easily fall into using God and manipulating God and using God as a good luck charm. And that's what they attempted to do in our first reading today. They took the Ark of the Covenant, that chest that contained the commandments of God and was the very seat of God, his throne on earth, and they decided, let's carry it into the battlefield and we certainly can win. Well, it was an utter disaster. The Philistines routed them terribly and not only that, captured the Ark of the Covenant. Their hearts were not in the right place. They were trying to manipulate God, but a true relationship can never be one of manipulation. And that's true for ourselves as well. We cannot use people in our relationships, and certainly we can never use God. He will never allow himself to be used. But God does yearn for us and long for us and wants to enter into that intimacy with us. And when we do that, when we just don't know of God but really know him well in our daily lives, then God will never abandon us. God will always be there for us and will do anything for us if we ask. So as we come here today, my friends, like the leper in the gospel, afflicted in our brokenness, we come to Jesus as God, yes, but also as friend. And we cry out to him and say, Lord, make me clean if you will it. And our Lord says, I do will it. And then Jesus will touch us and heal us and give us new life in his love. Striving to be faithful and obedient to God, let us now join in offering our prayers and petitions to him for members of the clergy that they continue to shepherd the faithful and help them grow in their love for the Lord. Let us pray to the Lord for all those in positions of authority, that by their actions they show respect for those they govern. Let us pray to the Lord. For those who struggle with addiction, may they turn to God for the grace and strength needed to begin the journey toward recovery. Let us pray to the Lord. For our community, that we may continue to grow in the love for God, our Father, and for each other. Let us pray to the Lord. We pray for the intention of our Mass this morning for Nicholas and Elke Werner. Let us pray to the Lord. We pray for all our departed brothers and sisters in Christ. Especially today, we remember the priest of our diocese who died on this day, Father George Adamer in 1905, Father Edward A. Rady in 1989, and Father Charles Mako in 2010, and for all our loved ones, that they may experience perfect peace and joy in heaven. Let us pray to the Lord. 
Heavenly Father, we ask that you hear and answer our prayers through Christ our Lord. Amen.